Hi everybody. We've learned how to build physical and logical standby databases and how to manage them. An important part of managing standby databases is monitoring them. I dedicated this lecture to discuss about monitoring the data guard configuration databases. In this lecture, you should learn about the tools that will help you to do the following. Use the alert log file and the v dollar sign data guard status to monitor the data guard. Obtain the archive log gaps, transport lag, apply lag, and active apply rate using SQL Plus and the broker. Obtain information about the standby processes. And finally, obtain statistics about the logical standby database. Monitoring data guard implementation is very important for a DBA. Proactive monitoring of data guard implementations will help you to take action before an issue may be raised. You may notice the lag between the primary database and the standby database is increasing, and you start looking into it before someone is complaining. As with any system, after you set up a data guard configuration, you will always reach to a point where some issue is raised and you're asked to resolve it. This issue could be something not working or a performance issue. Let me mention some examples of the issues you may face. In a physical standby database, you may face issues like the sys password has been changed in the primary database and not in the standby database. The media recovery process is not keeping up with the primary database. The automatic gap resolution is not working and you need to fill the gap manually. Or the standby database is not receiving the redo data at all. In a logical standby database, you may face issues like the SQL apply returns error because the standby database cannot find the row to be modified or the SQL apply keeps stopping because the standby database system runs out of a free disk space or the primary database issued an unsupported statement. In this lecture, I will discuss the monitoring and troubleshooting tools that you can use to build a health check status report on your data guard environment or to troubleshoot any issue you may face in it. If any data guard component raises an error, it will be reported in the alert log file. You will have to look into the alert log file in both the primary database and the standby database. Most DBAs have their scripts set up to monitor the alert log file for the ORA errors and send email notification when something wrong is reported in the file. Alert log file is there in XML format and text format. The text version of the alert log file is saved in the directory as shown in the slide. In the next slide, I will talk about a view that will help you in digging into the alert log file and get the data guard messages. In this lecture, whenever you see the letter P between brackets, it means I am talking about a monitoring tool that concerns a physical standby database. Whenever you see the letter L between brackets, it means the named monitoring tool is to be used for a logical standby database. If either of the letters are there, then it means the tool can be used with any database type. Here I'm talking about the v sign data guard status view. This view displays the most recently messages written in the alert log file or the server process trace files that concern physical standby databases. This view has two key columns, facility and severity. The facility column could be one of the possible values in the list as shown in the slide. Those values represent the category of the event like crash recovery, log transport service, etc. Severity describes the severity of the event. You will find this view very helpful when you troubleshoot an issue in data guard. You can use it to know the events that happened in the database right before the issue was raised.
The DBA underscore log STDBY events view records history of the events that occurred in the SQL apply. This view is applicable only in logical standby databases. Archive log gap is the redo archive files that were generated by the primary database and have not been transferred to the standby database. This usually happens because of a network failure between the primary database and the standby database. In a physical standby database, you can use the v$ sign archive gap view to obtain the sequence number of the redo received by the standby database. Compare it with the latest sequence number generated by the primary database. This can be obtained from the sequence number column in the archived log table in the primary database. I will show you the query in the next slide. The first select statement in this slide can be used to obtain the most recent archive log file in the primary database. The second select statement should be run from the primary database and it returns the last archive log file that was transferred to the standby database. By comparing the values of those two statements, you can detect any archive log gap. An additional view that can be used to retrieve information about the archived redo log files is the DBA log STDBY log. This view will retrieve information about the archived redo log files that are being processed by the SQL apply. It retrieves the file names, start and end of redo sequence number for each file, and whether the file is being currently processed by the SQL apply. Speaking about the lags in DataGuard, we have two types of lags, transport lag and apply lag. Transport lag is the amount of time between redo generated in the primary database and redo transferred to the standby database. It is pretty much the lag that results from the archived redo log gap. This lag represents the amount of data you will lose in case of failover. Apply lag is how much the apply is lagging behind the data in the primary database. To get information about the transport lag and the apply lag, run the query from v$ sign data guard status view in the standby database as shown in the slide. The query also retrieves the apply finish time. This time is the time that is expected to take for failing over. We call that time to recover objective or TRO when we were planning for the data guard implementation. When you have a system with heavy transactions, you need to know how fast the standby database is able to keep up with the primary database. In case of physical standby database, you use the v$ sign recovery progress view to get this information. The query in the slide retrieves the active apply rate, average apply rate in kilobyte per second, and redo applied in megabytes. Apply rate is how much redo is processed by the apply services per unit of time. To obtain information about the redo apply progress in a logical standby database, you can use the v$ sign log stdby progress view. This view can be used to calculate both the redo lag and the apply lag. In order to make the calculation, you first need to understand the columns in the view. The table in the slide demonstrates the columns that you need to understand. Applied SCN column has the SCN of the last transaction applied in the standby database. Applied time is the time and the date of the applied SCN. Latest SCN is the highest SCN of all radio records that Logical Standby has encountered in its system. Latest time is the time and the date of latest SCN. 
the slide is showing how you can use the v dollar sign log stdby progress to calculate the transport lag and the apply lag in a logical standby database the delta between the latest time and applied time is the apply lag period the delta between the system time and the latest time is the redo lag period this assumes that the time in the primary database system and the standby database system is the same. If the broker is configured in your data guard implementation, the simple show database command will give you a quick overview of the health of your entire data guard configuration. Transport lag, apply lag, and average apply rate will all be displayed for you. The verbose option in the show database command will provide you more details about the status of your data guard configuration. If you are using a rack database, use show instance command to display the required information. In DG MGRL, to display all the log files on the primary database that were not successfully archived to one or more standby databases, show the property send queue entries, which stands for send queue entries. To display all the log files that were received by the standby database but have not yet been applied, show the receive queue entries property. To have a look at the processes running in a standby database and check their status, use the view v sign managed standby. For a logical standby database, use the view v sign log stdby process. Statistics that are related to the log minor and SQL apply operations can be obtained from v sign log stdby underscore stats. You can get information like memory used by the appliers, number of preparer and applier processes, and number of parallel servers. We have not discussed about what are the appliers and preparers. Those are used in the internal operation of the log miner. If you are curious about how the log miner is internally running in a logical standby database, you may have a look at it in the documentation after you finish the course. But at this stage of our course, you should be alright to go ahead without it. So that's it for this lecture. We've learned about the tools that you use to do the following. Use the alert log file and the v sign data guard status to monitor the data guard. Obtain the archive log gaps, transport lag, apply lag, and active apply rate using SQL Plus and the broker. Obtain information about the standby processes and obtain statistics about the logical standby database. In the next practice lecture, we will have a look at those tools and use them to obtain details about the data guard operations. Thanks for watching and see you in the next tutorial.